Yup, that's me running a Core i9-10900K at 6 GHz using Intel Cryo Cooling Technology. You probably wonder how I got here. Well, let me show you. Hello and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we'll be overclocking the Intel Core i9-10900K processor all the way up to 6 GHz using Intel Cryo Cooling Technology. This video will be a slightly different form than our regular Scatterbencher videos Here's how we'll go about it. First, we'll have a closer look at what is Intel Cryo Cooling Technology. Then, we'll have a look at the BIOS configuration to get to 6 GHz. And lastly, we'll have a look at the performance gains from overclocking with the Intel Cryo Cooling Technology versus a regular high-end custom loop water cooling setup. We'll finish it off with some concluding thoughts. If you're looking for an easy guide on how to overclock the Core i9-10900K, feel free to check out Scatterbencher episode 10, where we go through the entire process. Before we get started, however, let's first have a look at the hardware that we use in this guide and what this Intel Cryo Cooling Technology is all about. Along with the Intel Core i9-10900K processor, in this guide we will be using the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Apex motherboard, an Asus ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti graphics card, a pair of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4-4266 memory sticks, a Seasonic Prime 850W Platinum power supply, the Elmore Labs P80DB2 LPC debug card, and of course EK Quantum X water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the component should be around $4,630. Intel Cryo Cooling Technology is touted as an intelligent, sub-ambient cooling product that provides a new and improved overclocking experience on desktops. It takes advantage of the Intel Thermal Velocity Boost feature, which aims to improve system performance by increasing the CPU frequency based on the CPU temperature. The thermal velocity boost is different from the regular turbo boost, as turbo boost looks primarily at the available power budget. The cryo cooling technology is built around the thermoelectric effect. The thermoelectric effect is the conversion of differences in temperature to an electric voltage and vice versa. In the PC enthusiast space, it is best known as Peltier cooling. The Peltier effect creates a temperature difference by transferring heat between two electrical junctions. A voltage is applied across joint conductors to create an electric current. When the current flows through the junctions of the two conductors, heat is removed at one junction and cooling occurs. Simply put, more voltage makes one side go very hot and the other side go very cold. The main advantage of Peltier cooling for PC enthusiasts is that it allows you to get sub-ambient temperatures. And as we all know, lower temperatures means higher overclocks. I don't want to go too deep in the what's and the why's of Peltier cooling, but suffice to say that while the technology has been around for over two decades in the enthusiast space, it still hasn't really found any footing in the mainstream market. So what makes Intel cryo cooling technology different then? Well, there's a couple of things actually. First, the Intel cryo cooling technology offers a software solution to control the Peltier temperature. In cryo mode, the tech cooling is only switched on when required and is switched off when not required. This greatly reduces the overall power consumed as the tech is not running at full power all the time. Second, the Intel controller also measures the humidity in the room. Based on this input, the controller can adjust the tech temperature to always be above the dew point. This helps to avoid any condensation issues. Thirdly, it maximizes the impact of the Intel Thermal Velocity Boost feature by ensuring best case operating temperatures. Using Thermal Velocity Boost also allows us to opportunistically benefit from the added frequency range as the frequency adjusts based on when we really need it. All things considered, the Intel cryo cooling technology is arguably the most well-rounded and advanced implementation of thermoelectric cooling in the enthusiast space to date. At the moment of recording, Cryo cooling is supported by all the 10th generation K and KF CPUs on the desktop. Now, let's get our overclock on. Okay, so before I show you the settings I used to achieve 6 GHz, a word of warning. Do not try these settings at home unless you have this exact cooling solution and unless you know what you're doing. This is definitely not a beginner's guide and there's definitely an increased risk of damaging your components. 
so please be careful. Upon entering the BIOS, enter the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP2. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to By Core Usage. Enter the By Core Usage submenu. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 0 to 60. Set Turbo Ratio Course 0 to 4. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 1 to 54. Set Turbo Ratio Course 1 to 6. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 2 to 52. Set Turbo Ratio Course 2 to 10. Exit the By Core Usage submenu. Enter the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Set Overclocking TVB to Enabled. Set 1 Core Active to 10 Core Active to Enabled. Set Negative Ratio Offset A for 1 Core Active to 10 Core Active to User Specify. Then for 1 Core Active to 10 Core Active, set Temperature A, Negative Ratio Offset A, and Temperature B for additional minus 1x ratio to the following. 1 Core, 10, 3, 55. 2 Core, 10, 3, 51. 3 Core, 10, 4, 47. 4 Core, 10, 4, 43. 5 Core, 58, 1, 68. 6 Core, 54, 1, 64. 7 Core, 62, 1, 72. 8 Core, 58, 1, 68. 9 Core, 54, 1, 64. 10 Core, 50, 1, 60. Exit the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Enter the Tweaker's Paradise submenu. Set internal PLL voltage to 0.9. Set ring PLL voltage to 0.9. Set PLL bandwidth to level 1. Set eventual PLL termination voltage to 1.05. Exit the Tweaker's Paradise submenu. Enter the AI Features submenu. Set package temperature threshold to 85. Set regulate frequency by above threshold to enabled. Exit the AI Features submenu. Set CPU core cache voltage to adaptive mode. Set additional turbo mode CPU core voltage to 1.55. Go to the advanced menu. Enter the CPU configuration submenu. Enter the CPU power management control submenu. Ensure CPU C states is set to enabled. Go to the monitor menu. Enter the QFAN configuration submenu. Enter the chassis fan configuration submenu. Set chassis fan Q fan control to auto. Set chassis fan Q fan source to T sensor. Set chassis fan 2 profile to manual. Set the upper temperature to 50. Set the max duty cycle to 100%. Set the middle temperature to 30. Set the middle duty cycle to 60. Set the lower temperature to 25. Set the min duty cycle to 20%. Enter the boot menu. Set wait for F1 error to disabled. Then save and exit the BIOS. When in the operating system, make sure to set the Intel Cryo Cooling to unregulated mode. Now, simply wait until the CPU is sufficiently cooled down and you'll see the CPU running at 6 GHz. Now that we got all the way up to 6 GHz, let's have a look at the performance gains. We compared two systems. One is a regular high-end water-cooled system with the EK Magnitude water block. The other one is our tech setup with the Delta Tech. All other parts, including the Coolstream PE360 radiator, remain the same. Here's a list of the benchmarks used in this guide. Super Pi 4M, Geekbench 5, HWBOT X265, Cinebench R23, Realbench version 2.56, 3D Mark Night Raid, V-Ray 5, Final Fantasy 14, Prime 95 Small FFT with AVX enabled. To check the performance at stock configuration, enter the Extreme Tweaker menu, set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Disabled and Force All Limits, then save and exit the BIOS. Before we get started with pushing the performance of the Core i9-10900K processor, let's first have a look at the scoring at default settings. Super Pi 4M, 36.091 seconds. Geekbench 5 Single, 1,388 points. Geekbench 5 Multi, 9,453 points. HWBOT X265 4K, 17.104 frames per second. 
Cinebench R23, 13,079 points. V-Ray 5, 11,357 V samples. Realbench version 2.56, 170,151 points. 3 mark Night Raid, 42,130 marks. Final Fantasy XIV, 88.56 frames per second. When running Prime 95 Small FFT with AVX enabled, the processor runs at 3.75 GHz with 1.017 V. The CPU power is around 127 Watt, and the average CPU temperature is 56 degrees centigrade. As a first test, we'll overclock the system using a regular high-end custom loop water cooling with the EK Magnitude water block. We'll test two overclocking scenarios. First, we'll just unlock all the power limits. This will allow our processor to run for an unlimited time at the highest possible turbo boost ratios. Second, we will do some manual overclocking and push our CPU to its maximum stable configuration for both single-threaded and multi-threaded applications. Also, we will enable XMP for all scenarios. Upon entering the BIOS, enter the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP2. Set ACES Multicore Enhancement 2 Enable Remove All Limits. Then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and got the following performance compared to default configuration. When running Prime 95 Small FFT with AVX enabled, the processor runs at 4.9 GHz with 1.278 V. The CPU power is around 285 W and the average CPU temperature is 83 degrees centigrade. Next up, manual overclocking. Upon entering the BIOS, enter the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP2. Set ACES Multicore Enhancement 2 Enable Remove All Limits. Set AVX Instruction Core Ratio Negative Offset to 2. Set CPU Core Ratio to By Core Usage. Enter the By Core Usage submenu. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 0 to 55. Set Turbo Ratio Course 0 to 4. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 1 to 54. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 1 to 54. Set Turbo Ratio Cores 1 to 6. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 2 to 53. Set Turbo Ratio Cores 2 to 8. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 3 to 52. Set Turbo Ratio Cores 3 to 10. Exit the By Core Usage submenu. Set CPU Core Cache Voltage to Adaptive Mode. Set Additional Turbo Mode CPU Core Voltage to 1.525 V. Go to the Advanced menu. Enter the CPU Configuration submenu. Enter the CPU Power Management Control submenu. Ensure CPU C states are set to Enabled. Then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and got the following performance compared to stock configuration. When running Prime 95 Small FFT with AVX enabled, the processor runs at 5 GHz with 1.307 V. The CPU power is around 312 Watt and the average CPU temperature is 87 degrees centigrade. In the second phase of our overclocking journey, we'll overclock the system using Intel cryocooling technology. All the components remain the same, we just swap out the magnitude for the Delta Tech. We'll use the Delta Tech in two modes, cryo mode and unregulated mode. In cryo mode, the Intel software ensures that the tech never drops below the dew point. This avoids any form of condensation to occur. In unregulated mode, the tech always runs at full power and thus the temperature will drop well below ambient. Without proper insulation, you may face water droplets on your hardware, so please be careful. Make sure to follow the Delta Tech installation guide and take all of the necessary precautions to avoid condensation. If you're also using the Maximus 12 Apex, make note of the condensation sensor around the socket. While this feature is mostly targeted at the extreme overclockers using liquid nitrogen, it comes in handy with unregulated mode as well. We'll try the two modes in a variety of scenarios. Stock, unlocked, using ASUS's thermal velocity boost profiles, and then do some manual overclocking. Upon entering the BIOS, enter the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Disabled Enforce All Limits. Then save and exit the BIOS. When in the operating system, make sure to set the Intel Cryo Cooling to Cryo Mode. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default configuration. 
we can see that the performance is slightly higher in all benchmarks. This is due to the cryocooling ensuring better operating temperatures. The lower than regular water cooling temperatures help the CPU stay in turbo for longer and also help enable thermal velocity boost for longer. When running Prime95 Smell A50 with AVX enabled, the processor runs at 3.7 GHz with 1 volt. The CPU power is around 121 Watt and the average CPU temperature is 53 degrees centigrade. Upon entering the BIOS, enter the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP2. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Then save and exit the BIOS. When in the operating system, make sure to set the Intel Cryo Cooling to Cryo Mode. We reran the benchmarks and got the following performance increase compared to default operation. We can see that the performance continues to rise. The performance increases can be attributed to the better temperatures, which enables the CPU to stay in thermal velocity boost for longer. Cinebench R23 failed because of a thermal runaway situation. In case you didn't know, Cinebench R23 introduces a 10 minute heat up before running the benchmark. That means the CPU is at full load for an extended period of time. It is during this heat up phase that we get a thermal runaway situation and overheating. That's because the tech is capable of handling up to 200 watt load. When we use unlock turbo configuration, the load is around 280 watts. When running Prime95 Small F50 with AVX enabled, we face exactly the same thermal runaway situation and the system simply crashes. Now let's start exploring the potential additional overclocking headroom that cryocooling offers us. Our first step will be to use the ASUS Thermal Velocity Boost profiles offered on the Maximus 12 Apex motherboard. We will enable the plus two boost profile for each of the three overclocking configurations we tried with water cooling, stock, unlocked, and manual. For stock comparison, upon entering the BIOS, enter the Extreme Tweaker menu, set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Disabled Enforce All Limits, enter the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu, set Overclocking TVB to plus two boost profile then save and exit the BIOS. When in the operating system, make sure to set the Intel Cryo Cooling to Cryo Mode. For unlocked comparison, upon entering the BIOS, enter the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP2. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Enter the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Set Overclocking TVB to Plus 2 Boost Profile then save and exit the BIOS. When in the operating system, make sure to set the Intel Cryo Cooling to Cryo Mode. Upon entering the BIOS, enter the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP2. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set AVX Instruction Core Ratio Negative Offset to 2. Set CPU Core Ratio to By Core Usage. Enter the by core usage submenu. Set turbo ratio limit 0 to 55. Set turbo ratio core 0 to 4. Set turbo ratio limit 1 to 52. Set turbo ratio cores 1 to 6. Set turbo ratio limit 2 to 51. Set turbo ratio cores 2 to 8. Set turbo ratio limit 3 to 50. Set turbo ratio cores 3 to 10. Exit the By Core Usage submenu. Enter the Internal CPU Power Management submenu. Set Long Duration Package Power Limit to 170. Exit the Internal CPU Power Management submenu. Enter the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Set Overclocking TVB to Plus 2 Boost Profile. Exit the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Set CPU Core Cache Voltage to Adaptive Mode. Set additional turbo mode CPU core voltage to 1.525. Go to the advanced menu. Enter the CPU configuration submenu. Enter the CPU power management control submenu. Ensure CPU C states is set to enabled. Then save and exit the BIOS. When in the operating system, make sure to set the Intel cryo cooling to unregulated mode. We reran the benchmarks and got the following performance increase compared to default configuration. For stock and plus two TVB boost profile in cryo mode, for unlocked and plus two TVB boost profile in cryo mode, 
Cinebench R23 again failed because of a thermal runaway situation. For manual OC and plus 2 TVB boost profile in cryo mode, when running Prime95 small FFT with AVX enabled, the processor runs at 4166MHz with 1.072V. The CPU power is around 171 Watt and the average CPU temperature is 68 degrees centigrade. In our last and final step of the overclocking journey, we will try unregulated mode. We will compare two scenarios. The first one is our manual overclock using the plus two boost profile from the previous configuration. And the second one is our six gigahertz overclock from the very beginning of the video. We re-ran the benchmarks and got the following performance increase compared to default operation. For manual OC and plus two TVB boost profile in unregulated mode, for manual OC and manual thermal velocity boost in unregulated mode. Before we get to the concluding thoughts, let's first compare the performance of all of our different overclocks. Looking at the pure benchmark score comparison, we notice a couple of things. First, in heavy multi-threaded benchmark applications like Cinebench R23 and V-Ray 5, regular high-end custom loop water cooling comes out on top. That's because the cooling system is capable of handling power consumption loads over 200 watts with ease. The tech is limited to 200 watts. So when a workload comes by that exceeds this, either the CPU will start heating up faster, reducing the frequency faster, or not work altogether. Citibench R23 in particular is a tough nut to crack. As mentioned before, if we don't either limit the long duration maximum power or have the system target a specific temperature, the system will just not pass the benchmark. Second, our max out overclock using unregulated mode has the most wins across all benchmarks and is particularly strong in lightly threaded workloads like SuperPi and Geekbench 5 single threaded. That's it, the performance difference with using just one of ASUS's TVB boost profiles is not that significant. However, it looks like all things considered, a well-tuned cryo-cooled setup will give you more performance than a regular high-end water cooling system. Looking at the maximum CPU ratio table, you can see why the performance difference across all cryo-cooling systems isn't that large. Without manual tuning, we already get up to 55x for a couple of cores and up to 51x for 10 cores. Looking at the Prime95 small FFT with AVX comparison, we note again that a configuration with power limits unlocked will fail long-term stability tests unless we set other constraints. We achieved about 4.5 GHz stable with our manual maxed out system. While that is still well above the 3.7 GHz at stock, it is well below the 5 GHz we can achieve with high-end custom loop water cooling. All right, let's wrap this up. I really enjoyed tinkering with the Intel cryo cooling technology. In the past couple of weeks, it took me quite some time to get around all of the different issues but it's really satisfying to see all of the different technologies come together and eventually produce a six gigahertz overclock. Admittedly, it doesn't run games or any other application at this speed, but seeing it idle in Windows at this frequency is still very exciting. We can see some additional performance benefits in lightly threaded workloads from the higher frequencies reaching up to 5.7 gigahertz. The multi-threaded performance is lower than what we see from a well-tuned system with high-end custom loop water cooling. That is of course to be expected since the power consumption can easily exceed 300 watts on a highly overclocked i9-10900K running a very demanding workload. This is far above the 200 watt maximum capability of the tech integrated in the EK Quantum X Delta tech. That said, with the right BIOS settings and options, we can mitigate this problem relatively well. Our maximum stable overclock in Prime95 small FFT with AVX enabled is 5 GHz with custom loop water cooling and 4.5 GHz with our tech system. That is still much, much higher than the 3.7 GHz we get at stock. To sum up my experience, I would say that this was quite an interesting overclocking journey. The cryo cooling technology had me hooked on tuning for several weeks and it's always nice to find new ways to extract even more performance from your system. I'd say for a first generation technology, this is already quite a solid implementation. Intel was quite smart to work with industry partners like EK and Cooler Master, as well as the motherboard vendors to bring a complete package to the market. The complete package of course includes the software, 
the cooling equipment, as well as the motherboard BIOS support. I look forward to seeing what Intel can do with next generations of cryo cooling and how it will enable us to extract more performance out of next generation CPUs. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and till the next time.